Welcome to Handle the Daily, where men who are husbands, dads, and entrepreneurs come together to conquer the day. This is more than just a podcast, it's a movement. Here we pursue the Lord, lead our families, and build the kingdom. If you're seeking conversations that delve deep, reveal truth, bring honor, and challenge you to become the man of God you know you can be, then you're in the right place. Join us as we journey together, setting our sights on legacy, forging ahead to build a better tomorrow. Welcome to Handle the Daily, where we conquer the day together to build legacy for tomorrow. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Handle the Daily, and today is a Friday episode. And today we've got Corey Aiken on, and in our last episode with Corey, he talked about how he does a family text message, and they call it the family mafia. What we're going to talk about today is the importance of communication, whether it's communicated in a way that is received or not, but it's about the obedient side of it. And I think you've got a lot that you can really give some good counsel, some good wisdom and advice on. And guys, strap in. Let's go. Will you lead us in prayer on this episode? I will. All right. Father, we just come before you and we just praise you and we thank you for all that you do. Lord, we ask that you would lead the conversation. And Father, that those that are listening, Father, that you know who needs to hear what you're wanting us to share today. And Father, most of all, we just want to glorify you Mm -hmm. and we give you all the praise and thank you for all that you do. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So why is communication with your family so important? Because they need something besides the world's voice. As simple as that. I don't even know how to ask another question beyond that. (laughs) Because it needs to be that simple. I think everything is so complicated and everybody needs to just realize like it actually can be so simple. So how did this start and why did it start and what is it? Like what's, what's this way that you communicate and why in the world do you call it the family mafia? Well, it started before the family mafia, before everybody had a text and my daughter went to college. Yeah. Where it started and the Lord gave it to me is we had dealt with spiritual warfare as a family. Mm -hmm. And I started to realize and listening to my kids when they came home from school, the inputs that they were getting. Yeah. You know, they would get inputs from mom and dad, but they needed more. And uh, I can't believe I'm sharing this story. This is going to crack you up. (laughs) And You too, I'm going to, you know, patent this, I think, now that I'm going to share it. But the only place that I knew my kids were sitting and being quiet was when they went to the bathroom. And so as a, I can't believe I'm sharing this. So as a dad, I got a whiteboard and I hung it on the wall right across from the toilet. And in there, I started putting phrases about who they were and putting scripture and quoting key leaders that, you know, those nuggets of wisdom. Yeah. And I would change it out every single week. It's good. So my kids, <laughs> right or wrong, when they sat down and when we had guests that went in, they were looking right at that board. It was at eye level. It was the I give a crap board? Yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> no. It, <laughs> It, exactly, but it was just something that was burning on my heart because, yeah. yes, as a parent, you can say stuff. Captive audience. It, it is. And they won't listen to you a lot of times. It's wah, 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 right? Yeah, like peanuts. Right. Yeah. And so I just thought, you know what? I can say the same thing on this whiteboard that I want to say to them, but then it's not me talking. It's their reading. It's them reading, and because there's nothing else in there, I'm feeding positive into their mind. I know know as stupid as it sounds and crazy that somebody would do that, that's what I started with my kids. And then when my daughter went to college, that's when I started the family mafia. Because, see, at that point, 
where I had been intentional in pouring into her, Mm -hmm. I didn't have that chance to do it on a daily basis. So the way for me to do that was when she woke up and looked at her phone, the first text she's going to see is the family mafia, and it's going to be a scripture, and it's going to be a word of encouragement or a story where God has moved in my life and changed me to help her and obviously my two boys. So how long has this text thread been going on? Well, she's 30, so 13 years. Still do it today. Now, Mom's gotten in on the gig. She wants a day. So it's Monday morning mafia with Mom. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and uh, I'm the emotional, you know, just share it all out. Shannon is the systematic Bible study fellowship trained. Let me go look up the words. <laughs> and so our two posts look drastically different. <laughs> I, I don't have my wife's gifting. I'm the lucky dip guy, and what I mean by that is pull, flop open my Bible, put my finger, and that's where I start reading. But you know what? God still speaks to me. Right. But I have gotten better of reading through the Bible, but I still do the lucky dip method. Now, my wife, it's a systematic Bible study for her quiet time. And, uh, and we just, people learn differently. So her morning mafias are drastically different. But they're so daggum rich. You know, I, I wish I had that gifting, but I don't. And so I, it's neat that we're together that way. Because, like, when I teach Sunday school, I'll put together mine, and then I give it to her, and I'm like, all right, make it right. And she'll give me the Greek word or the Hebrew word and kind of put some stuff together for me. And then I kind of, you know, rearrange kind of a final say type thing and go teach. So it's kind of cool. That is awesome. The different giftings. Yeah. And how we use it. But uh, yeah, 13 years. 13 years. So all, all three of your kids just instantly respond, Dad, love it. Thank you for sharing this. You're the best. <clears throat> no, not at all. Uh, and I will add this. Uh, their spouses are included as they've gotten married. You couldn't get into the family mafia until you married into the clan. So uh, they're on it now. But Clan no, Aiken? Yeah. <laughs> they... Um, they do not um, always respond. There was a lot of years that it was dry, mm. that literally I would send the text out and I would sit down and the enemy wanted me to quit. And I'd talk to my wife and I'm like, why am I doing this? I, I don't even get a, and it's not that I'm sharing it for a like or a heart emoji, but some acknowledgement the word of God that I'm trying to implant in my kids' hearts, that they're receiving it. Yeah. And there was years, just crickets. And my wife, in her wisdom, said, God called you to do this, didn't he? And I said, yeah. And she says, has he called you to stop? And I said, no. Then she goes, obedience is not an option. I mean, disobedience is not an option. And so... I've done that. Now, one of the funniest stories related to that is my son-in-law, who non-emotional, big guy. Uh, I just hug him now to make him uncomfortable. Uh, oh, man. When, when That's soon, awesome. And then I just hold him, you know, that type thing to make it worse. Because <laughs> uh, I can. And, uh, That's awesome. Just he doesn't show emotions. Yeah. And one Saturday morning... I was late posting, and I, I remembered it was at 1030, and at the time, they were still with us in Arlington before we moved to East Texas, and they moved to Boise. And he uh, sends his text to the family mafia, and he was a manager of a meat department grocery store, and uh, he goes, I didn't get God's word today. He goes, how am I going to operate? With all these butcher cleavers and people around, I might kill somebody today. <laughs> I mean, tongue in cheek, but not tongue in cheek. <laughs> yeah, it could be knife in head. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was a moment for me of God giving me a small glimpse that while He has never responded to any of those texts, God was still feeding my son-in-law's heart. He, he's thriving off of them. He is. 
I mean, like I can text him. I text um, my in-law kids once a week on Mondays and let them know I'm praying them. Now, my kids I text every single day outside the family mafia of, hey, I love you and I'm praying for you. Because I feel as a father, <clears throat> they need to hear those words every single day of their life. Yeah. Even though they're out, they're 30, 28, and 24 right now. Those are words they still need to hear. Because the enemy will tell them, you're not loved. Try and bring up stuff from the past. And I'm like, you have 13 years of history in your phone that you can read about how much your dad loved you every single day. You got 13 years in your history where you can go pull up the family mafia, throw out the jokes and all the stuff that we put in there as well, but you can see a dad that's loved you and wanted to implant God's word in your heart to make a generational change for the future. Did you have that? I did not. I did not grow up. My parents were Christian, but they were not active. Mm. And so <clears throat> my wife's family, other hand, you know, I always joke and make my mother-in-law uncomfortable in front of people. But I said, you know, when I walk into their house, I take my shoes off because I feel like I'm walking in the holy ground because their spiritual lineage is off the charts. You know, I can watch it from Shannon's gr <coughs> grandmother to her mom to Shannon let alone her sisters, but the heritage that was passed down is incredible. And that's something that I want for my family. And so trying to change that, I can remember when we first started going over, her mom would go, all right, it's Thanksgiving. We're going to say what we're thankful for this year. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, let's pull out the cheese, can we? <laughs> yeah, that was my mindset. But I can tell you today, totally different meaning. But that's part of your life now, isn't it, on Thanksgiving? You talk about what you're thankful for. Talk about what the Lord does. Yeah. I mean, it's just maturity and growth. And if you didn't grow up with it, you never saw it exhibited. Right. And so I had to change and mature. And now I cherish things within her family that I would tell you when we first got married, I'm like, that is the stupidest thing. I can't believe we're doing this, you know, type thing. I'm like, you guys are way over the top. And now it's just like, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things we did growing up, my dad's mom, I called her the queen of birthdays. Every kid's birthday, every grandkid birthday, every everybody's birthday was of the utmost importance to her. Mm -hmm. And I'd go over to my grandparents' house and she'd have this stack of birthday cards on her little table at her chair and she'd be writing a note and putting a $20 bill or a $50 bill or a $100 bill in it. And most of you, I didn't even know who they were. Right. But whenever it was us, her family that was in proximity, oh, man, she would tell us why she loved us. And so one of the things that we started doing in my family a few years ago is when it's someone's birthday – we all go around the table. I mean, it's at home. We don't go out to eat. We, we make the meal they like. Yep. We make the cake they like. And then we celebrate them. But then we pray over them, prophesy over them, and pour into them and record it. Oh, that's nice. On audio. And to go back and to just listen to those words of affirmation, those, oh, I am thankful for you, or mm -hmm. here's a prophetic word, like, oh, my gosh. And then my wife, we've been together two years as of today. Oh, congrats. Yeah, we started dating two years ago. Two weeks later, got engaged, and two and a half months later, got married. Wow. Shotgun that whole thing. But that's something that I introduced her to when we first started dating and everything. And it's like, she loves it now. And so just to see things that you would do in a family that someone would think was off, like, that was something that... I grew up with and whenever mm -hmm. we would see like my cousins, they'd get married and then their spouses would come in and they're like, why does grandma do this for our birthday? And she's like, 
It's the day God said you needed to be here. Mm, that's beautiful. We do similar. We go, yeah. we go around on birthdays. Yeah. And we've done it forever. But say, this is the reason why we love you. It's so awesome. It is. Because enemy likes to pit kids against kids. In the family, everybody knows everybody's warts. And by our selfish nature, that's usually our first response is the negative, not the positive. Right. And so to be able to combat, go, no, they actually really do love you. Yeah. Got to, you got to have at least that one day yep. or a few days. But I love what you're doing with the text, and, and especially <clears throat> that piece of you saying, my kids need to hear me say I love them or read that every day. That's so important because you lost your dad a long time ago, and so you don't have that. And right. so you doing what you didn't have, man, I just, I want to applaud you for that. Well, thank you very much. Like, it's like when you told me you did that, I actually started doing my own version of the family mafia, but I stopped. Why well, do I want to encourage you to start? I'm going to start again because I stopped for the very reason of no communication. And being in what I do for a living is communication and getting a response and yeah. And so you, 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 you have given me some really powerful nuggets and those are things that I was like, dang, I was just being a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was being selfish. I wanted, I wanted the reaction. I wanted the response. I wanted to be like, I wanted to get the thank you. I do too. Right. But it's not about that. It's about the obedience of, of doing it. What God called you to do. But it's, it's the layering of the love. It's the layering of the life. It's the layering of them knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are loved by their dad mm-hmm. who loves right. the father. You know, just trying to show his love in a tangible way in the world we live in by how we communicate today is not always the easiest. Yeah. And you don't always want to do it. I mean, there's days I, I don't want to get on the wall and fight for the family. I, I just want to be selfish do nothing. You guys fend for yourself today. Isn't that the easier route, though? Absolutely. But every day that I do that, guess what? The next day when I get up, I'm having to repair everything because I didn't stand on the wall. So it's double work. Exactly. It is. Or triple. Or quadruple. Yeah, like me telling my kids when they were cleaning or doing something. If you do it right the first time, you spend less time. I mean, it's the same concept here when you're fighting for your family. It is a game. It's a long game of consistency. Why why do you say we're fighting for our family? Because that's what the enemy wants to destroy. Why? (laughs) I know I sound like a toddler right now asking why repeatedly, but because that's an institution of God. Mm. Because he ordained the family, one man, one woman. He gave us his words of... Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church. Yep. In the words of how the wife is supposed to honor and respect the husband, he tells the kids to honor your parents. He talks about kids being arrows in your quiver. You know, we can go down the list. It is God-ordained of how it's to work because it's an example of how his love is for his children. I think the the piece that gets really misunderstood is honor your parents doesn't say love your parents right it says honor your parents Mm -hmm. love is the action of honoring them right but i i think that i mean i know that i have even struggled as of late with the relationship with my mom and been going low and just calling her and be like hey how you doing mom she lives half an hour away but it's as if she lives a half a country away with the frequency that we see each other. And seeing, I know for me, seeing my mom stuck is really hard. She's been stuck since my dad died 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's one of those, like, my wife has encouraged me. She's like, you just need to love people where they are. 
being a strategy solution minded individual, I can fix you. Come on. Right. <laughs> but I had to fix me and I had to change the approach of just being in that consistency of just reaching out. I mean, it takes 20 phone calls to get one through to my mom. Right. Because she's believing the lies. But not going back to the last episode we take, but you got to stay in your circle. Right. Exactly. Yep. No, I know. I was with the man last night um, that Shannon and I had dinner with, him and his wife. His mom's 99 years old, mm. lives five blocks away, and he checks on her twice a day, morning and night. And it was clear as she she went through what she has gone through in aging, he shared about her anger. But what was also clear was his obedience and consistency of honoring his mom. Yeah. Because he still continues to do that. That was a message to me. Right. As I thought about it and thought, am I going to be consistent with my kids, whether they respond or not? Now, as they've gotten older, more mature, there's still some response. But there's many days and months I never hear anything from my sons. And then when they do, whether it's a like or this, it's either me or my wife. Did you see that? Hey. <laughs> you know, one of those type moments. And, it's not, and, again, it's not that you're looking for it, but you desire it. Our nature is we desire the feedback. Yeah. But I will say, as my wife said, it's about obedience. Yeah. We're not doing it for their feedback. We're doing it because that's what God called us to do. And so as you love your kids, it's a long game. Yeah. If you do it on emotions, you'd quit right now and you'd trade them out. Where's the receipt? Yeah. Send back to sender. <laughs> yeah. Can I get an upgraded <laughs> model? You know? Yeah. One that's less picky. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, wait, I'm like that. Dang. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so oftentimes the biggest thing is just getting started with doing the tech stuff. Mm -hmm. But then you're saying it's even sometimes more challenging to keep it going. I think so. So what, so I told you that I started it and stopped it <clears throat> because I was not getting communication. And you're telling me I need to start it again. So what what it what do I need to be doing from a heart posture to just do it? Like what what like why what what am I what it, what am I struggling with that is keeping me from doing it? Uh, I'm, I was gonna uh, filter my words, but I'm just gonna share what the Lord the word He gave me is yeah. it's selfishness. I'd agree. The reason why we don't do things is because we're selfish. Yeah. Because it requires something of us and we get nothing in return. Yeah, I'd agree. You know, I, w I would sit here and say, think about Christ on the cross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're the most selfish pe people in the world. Yep. And how much time do we spend in this word? How much time do we spend in prayer? What kind of feedback does he get? He came and gave his life for you and I. Right. You know, but we can't love our kids. I mean, it, it's perspective. Totally. You know, and so it goes back to our heart. We've got a heart issue. Right. You know, and again, I love the phrase, obedience is not an option. You know, partial obedience is disobedience. Totally. You know, and if God told you to do something, then do it. There's a reason he told you to do it. You may never understand that reason. He doesn't have to tell us that reason. We're still required to do it. But I want to know why. Come on. And I'm a why guy. <laughs> right? I am. I want to know why. You know, but like I shared in the other segment, that's what's so beautiful about my wife that I have learned is to start asking what, so not why. why. What is it, Lord, you're trying to teach me? What is it you're trying to show me? So good. You want to close this out? I do. I do. Father, we just thank you for this segment. And, Lord, you know who needed to hear 
your words today about loving your family and loving your kids. Mm -hmm. Lord, I've asked that these men would choose obedience and choose to follow the actions you've called them to, regardless of the feedback, the outcomes, that they would be consistent, Father. And Lord, we ask that these men would seek after you. Father, they would glorify you. And Father, through their actions, they would change the behavior of their kids. Father, because we know that what we do today echoes into eternity. Lord, we love you and praise you, and we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. So guys, stop being selfish. You know, like just, just let it be that simple. Stop being selfish and, and do what you can to be that Christ-like representation in your wife, in, your, in the life of your wife and in your kids. And do it with consistency. Do it with integrity and do it with honor. And listen to this episode again. Like It's as simple as starting a text, right? Yep. Getting in, like having that scripture, having your thoughts. And it can be just whatever it is for that day. Or if you need something that's more structured because you're an ABC kind of a person, figure out what that is. But get started because I'm going to get started again. Awesome. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of Handle the Daily. And we'll see you in our next episode. We're conquering today together so we can build legacy for tomorrow. See ya. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Handle the Daily, where we conquer the day together so we can build legacy for tomorrow. If you found this episode impactful, share it with other men in your life. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast, like, download, and share. To stay up to date in all we are doing, visit our website, handlethedaily.com, and make sure to tune into our next episode.